This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. From that previous introduction to the world of leases, we went through and identified that within the SEMA F1 paper, we are going to go through and look at leases under IFRS 16 from the lessee's perspective. So the information that you've got within the class notes recaps a little bit at the start about how relatively recent this IFRS 16 leases standard is. So talking about when it is applied from. So from the 1st of January 2019. It also goes on to mention briefly about the, the old leases standard, which was IS 17, if you care to note and observe that it was. Uh, but the big issue that we had when we were looking at IS 17 under the old accounting standard is that we had two different types of leases for lessee accounting. And the problem that that then meant is that there was a lot of finance that was held off the balance sheet. So there was no lease liability recognised in, in a large proportion of leases that were in existence. And this was felt that it didn't give a, a fair reflection of how the financial statements were representing leases in general. Because if we use the asset, if we were getting the benefits from using the asset, then it would look more effective within the financial statements if we were to recognise that asset and also recognising that corresponding lease liability then charging depreciation on the asset and charging interest on effectively what is an asset that's secured by a loan. So what we've gone through and done now is that the, the general rule that we have for IFRS 16 is that all leases will now be brought on to the statement of financial position. So every lease that you enter into will be on the statement of financial position, i.e. we will recognise an asset, which we will see later on is referred to as a right of use asset. And we will also see a corresponding lease liability. And all leases are taken on to the statement of financial position. However, there is an exception. And that's what we go through and, and begin to just touch upon now. So leases that won't be brought onto the balance sheet, i.e. leases that don't recognise the asset and that corresponding lease liability, is whereby the asset has a lease term of 12 months or less, so short lease periods. Again, just note, there is an and, but we don't see much of it within this F1 paper. There is also no purchase option. Uh, if we do have the option to purchase it at the end of that short lease period, then it would effectively be recognised on the statement of financial position as a, as a standard lease. Then the other scenario, so you've got a short life asset and then also low value assets. So it mentions there are things such as personal computers, so IT and office furniture. It was felt that the amount that would be recorded as an asset and a liability would be effectively immaterial. It's not going to make a material difference to the financial statement, so therefore we don't need to go through there and include them. So you've got the short life assets, low value assets, uh, some small minor points, I suppose, more from a, a work-based perspective as opposed to an exam perspective. Just note that for short life assets, so assets that are leased for periods of less than 12 months, that is done by class of assets. So all assets within the same class uh, would be done under that 12 month lease period. Uh, however, for the low value, that is done on a lease by lease basis. So you would look at each lease that you take on board for some IT, for some office furniture and identify whether or not that is low value. But the additional points that aren't going to go through there and be too relevant within the exam. I thought I'd just touch upon them 
anyway from a, a work-based perspective. So the key thing there is that if you have these short life assets or assets of low value, you don't recognize the asset, you don't recognize the corresponding liability. How do we recognize them? What do we show? Very straightforward. We just show an expense through profit or loss. And we'll go through and look at how to calculate the expense through profit or loss for our low value or short lease period assets in the next video. So I'll see you all shortly.